Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati amalina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun please read with me ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidah wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa basta minhuma رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدُ فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَأَحْسَنَ الْهَدْيِ وَأَحْسَنَ الْهَدْيِ هَدْيُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٌ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٌ فَقُلْ لَضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Alhamdulillah MashaAllah this is called Qudbatul Hajah as you notice and Hajah means need Hajah means need so it is the address of need the address of need now when we talk about needs generally we think about food and clothing and housing and things like that as human beings that is one aspect of need that we have to fulfill those physical things that we have need for to make our life easy and happy alhamdulillah there's another aspect of need that deals with the spirit or the soul and everything in this particular everything in this qudda deals with that need so pay careful attention because this is more important than food this is more important than, than, than drink this is more important than your clothing this is the most important need that you have and it is called khutbatul haja it was a khutbah that the prophet ﷺ used to give for at the time of important uh, at the time when of important issues like on the juma when I mean, people come this is what he addressed them with right now if you can imagine you could understand arabic you were living in the time of the prophet ﷺ, and you are listening to this and it is called khutbatul haja you can really imagine the kind of impact this would have on you because you would know oh this is what i need okay so let's start going back to, like, to what we did the last time inshallah yesterday and see if we have what we discussed understood inna means indeed alhamda means the praise so indeed the praise or all the praise lillah la means for allah Nahmaduhu. Nahmaduhu is the present tense, right? We praise him or we are praising him, right? It is continuous, inshallah, so we are praising him. And this, this word here, uh, I mean, you know, we use it every day in Surah Al-Fatiha. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Nasta'in means we seek help. The ha here goes back to Allah. So the help that we are seeking is Allah's help. Nastaghfiruhu. Nastaghfir is we seek forgiveness. Whose forgiveness? His forgiveness. That's Allah's forgiveness. The ha is a dhami that relates to that means who. Right? And na is for we. A, if we have alif, it would be astaghfirullah. Right? Or astaghfiruhu. Or astaghfiruka. Okay? We have we are familiar with these terminologies. 
وَنَعُوذُ means we seek Allah's protection. We seek refuge in Allah. Okay? And we use the word a'udhu very often. A'udhu is the, is the first person I'm speaking. So Allah says to say, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْنَّاسِ Say, I seek, I seek refuge or I seek refuge in Allah or the Rabb, the Lord, right? أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ means I seek refuge in Allah من, من, من الشيطان الرجيم From shaitan, they are cursed. Right? So what are we seeking refuge from? Min shururi and pusina. From the evil, shar, shurur. Shar, min sharri, sharri, uh, min sharri waswasil khannas. Right? Min sharri ma khalaq. Min sharri. Shar is singular, shurur is plural. Right? So here we have min from shurur, the evils of our nafs. Our nafs. Ourselves. Na here is, is, is plural for our nafs and fus. Is the proof for nafs. Min shururi and pusina wa min sayyati. And from sayyati, sayyatun is bad. Amal is actions. Amalun is one action. Amal innama al amalu bin niyat. Right? Man yahdihi lahu. Yahdi hada yahdi. It means to guide. Or he guides. Here it means he guides. So whoever guides, whoever he, Allah, guides him, the man reports back to the person who is, is guided here. Whoever Allah guides him, فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَا Then, la la here is la نَافِلَ الْجِنْسِ It negates everything that this model contains. So there will be absolutely no model for the person who Allah guides. لَهُ For him. Right? There is no model. Model is the one who misguides. So there will be no misguider. No one to misguide the one who Allah guides, not even Satan. If Allah guides the person, then Satan has no control anymore. And Alhamdulillah, may Allah guide all of us, Ameen, and guide, guide us and keep us firm until we die so that we can die upon Islam. But may you little, and whosoever he leads us straight, whosoever he calls to go straight, then again the Lana Philogens, Hadiyah, the Fatah here indicates Lana Philogens. Then there is no hadiyah for him. There is absolutely no one to guide lahu for him. There is absolutely no guide for him. There is absolutely no guide for him. Okay? So that goes back, that deals with that. Inshallah, today we're going to start with this. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. The wa means and. Wa means and. This here, wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Do you know this word? Do you know this sentence? Wa ashhadu an la. Forget the wa. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. When do you hear this? You hear this? Every adhan. Every adhan, the Muhammad says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. So you're supposed to be saying it. Shahida, shahida means to witness. Ashhadu, remember we said na'udhu means we seek protection. A'udhu means I seek protection. Right? Nashhadu would be we witness. Here we are saying I witness. So when we repeat behind the Mu'adhim, I'm saying I witness. What do I witness to? An that, an here means that, la ilaha. Again, you see la nafil al jins here. It negates every, every model, every hadi here. Ilah is negated fully. What's an ilah? An ilah is anything that is worship. Anything. Some people worship money. Some people worship fame. Some people worship idols. Some people worship trees. Some people worship themselves, their ego. Some people worship Allah. Some people worship Isa alayhi salam. And all of them are false except Allah. The only true one that deserves to be worshipped is Allah. La ilaha, la here, negates everything that is worshipped. There is absolutely no deity that should be worshipped. Absolutely no deity that should be worshipped. That's the first part of the kalima. Right? So I witness that there is absolutely ashhadu. Ashhadu. What do I, I, I ashhad lahu? And la ilaha illallah. Illa means except. 
illallahu. Right? I witness that there is absolutely no deity worthy of worship but Allah. So we have to ponder that statement. That is a statement of Islam. Every day, if we hear the Adhan, five times a day we hear it. Right? Twice. That is ten times. Then if we do the Iqamah, that is 15 times because the, the calm has Ashadun la ilaha illallah again. 15 times a day we hear it. Where else do we say Ashadun la ilaha illallah? We say it after wudu. Right? Ashadun la ilaha illallah. Right? We say it after wudu. Inshallah. Right? Where else do we say it? We say it in the tashahud. So when you are saying it, please be conscious of what you are saying when you are reading it in these spaces, inshallah. Okay? And then there are other places we are we are saying La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Right? Uh, forget the ashadu and right? We are saying La ilaha illallah in so many places. Okay? Like there is a vicar that you should say La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin kadeer. Right? Like wahdahu la sharika la. Right? Up to here. Okay? You see? La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. That is a dhikr that you, you should put, you're supposed to say. It is a, from the sunnah to say it a hundred times every day. Inshallah. All right? Now, if you say that, you're, you, you have memorized it already from, you already memorized it, so you know it. But do you know the meaning? Now, illa means except Allah. So I witness that there is absolutely no deity worthy of worship illa Allah. You see, when it's translated, there's no deity worthy of worship and things like that. It is not bringing home the meaning. When you when you when you when you understand the Arabic, this is la nafil al jins here, this la la here, and it negates every deity. Then you realize, oh, this is really magnis, magnificent stuff. This is majestic stuff, All right? Wahdahu wah wahid means one, one. He is alone, right? He is alone. La. Listen to this again. La again. La nafil al jins. See how much time it comes? La nafil, la sharika. Look, la sharika lahu. Lahu means we had lahu so many times already for him. La sharika lah. Sharik means partners. So there is absolutely no partners for him. He has no partners. Absolutely no partners. All right. So what am I witness to? I am witnessing to the fact that there is no deity. Absolutely no deity worthy of worship. And Ila is anything that is worship. Illallah, except Allah, who is alone. La sharika la. And there is absolutely no sharik for him. There is absolutely no partners for him. Sharik means partners. Wa ashadu, again ashadu. And I witness anna, anna, that indeed anna and inna have the same meaning. Right? They are used in different connotations. Inna is used at the beginning of a sentence. And Anna is used in the middle of the sentence, but they have the same meaning. Anna, Inna. Anna Muhammad, and that indeed Muhammad is Abduhu. Who again is a pronoun, right? Ab, Abduman, Abdullah, right? Ashadu Anna Muhammadan, Abdullah, wa Rasulullah, right? The who here refers back to Allah, right? So it, it is an eyewitness that indeed Muhammad. Is Allah's Abd. Abd means slave. Allah's slave and his messenger. Okay? Inshallah. So this is what we are going to translate today. Um, the other thing I want to you to pay attention to very quickly. I'm going to go it over. Alhamdu. How much times in the day you think you say it? Can you, uh, do you recall if you ever say it in the day? At least 30? Okay, let me tell you how much time. At least 20? Look at how much time you say Alhamdulillah. Pay attention now, right? Okay. Every time you read Surah Al-Fatiha, you're saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin because Surah Al-Fatiha is as a compulsion for you to read. Compulsion. For you to read every time you read the Fard Salat, every time you read the Nawafil Salat, you're saying Alhamdulillah. All right? That is saying Alhamdulillah. Every time after Salat, if you sit down after the Salat, and you say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. You're saying Alhamdulillah 33 times. At least. Think of what you're doing. Every time, every time you go to sleep, you're supposed to say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. So 
Think about this when you say it now. All right? Think about it when you say it. Now, there are other forms in which Alhamdulillah is, is, is said. Right? It is not said as Alhamdulillah. It is said, for for example, Lahul Mulk wa Lahul Hamd. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Lahul Mulk wa Lahul Hamd. Lahul Hamd is the same as Alhamdulillah. Right? It's the same as Alhamdulillah. 100 times. You should say that, inshallah, right? Um, that is, you should say in the morning, right? Now there's another way to say it. Alhamdulillah equal to lahul hamd or equal to bihamdihi. The Prophet Sallallahu says, whoever says subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Bihamdihi is the same. Bi means with. Hamdihi means with his praise. With praise for him, right? So the point is that you are saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, you are saying, supposed to say it in the morning and the evening. Now, can you imagine how much times we are not conscious of what we are supposed to be conscious of? Alhamdulillah. So I think that this here is something that you should pay careful attention to and work on getting it sorted out in your life. That every time you say Alhamdulillah, now be conscious of it. Every time you pray, every time you pray, you say, Sami'allahu liman hamidah. Allah hears the one who praises him. What do you say? Rabbana, either lakal hamd. You're speaking directly now. For you is the praise. Or Allahumma, Rabbana, lakal hamd. You know, and they have different ways. But the point is that you're saying it so much. I, I, I know I'm taking a lot of time on this, but it is important because I want you to interconnect the Arabic with your day. Right? The same thing with Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Every time you say it, be conscious of what you're saying, okay? And so, inshallah, that's all I want you to be. Overview. Bismillahi, walhamdulillah. Look, we have walhamdulillah. And this is the next thing we're going to discuss, the bismillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Sometime in the future. Amma ba'd. Brothers and sisters, we welcome you to today's session. And this definitely, as I said, is an honor for us, but I like to repeat it because... Repeating things that you are grateful for is something that is important. You should say that you are grateful, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to increase in you. Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, If you are grateful, if you give shukur, then I am going to give, I am going to increase for you. So you want increase of blessings, you want increase of bounties, you get, say alhamdulillah, say ashkuruka, aqsamu al-kalam. Aqsamul Kalam. Read it inshallah. Aqsamul Kalam. Aqsamul Kalam. It's called parts of speech. Kalam means speech. Aqsam means part. Parts of speech. Right? Information relating to Al Ism. Remember we did Al Ism yesterday. We did Ism without the Al. Asma is its plural. Al Asma'u. Okay? Is Al Ismu Al Asma'u. Right? So you see. All you have to do is, if you remember the words yesterday, then Alhamdulillah, you already got the word in your head. Information relating to Al-Fi'alu. al al fi'alu, And the plural for Al-Fi'al is Al-Af'al. The Jim here means Jama. All right? So that's why you have Jim. Jim means Jama, which is plural, as we did yesterday. Mufrad, Muthanna, Jama. Ismun Fi'al, Harf. Al-Harfu. Information relating to Al-Harfu. The plural for Harf is Al-Hurufu. Okay? So, inshallah, this is what our class is going to be about today, inshallah. Salani, salathatun means, salatha means three, right? Okay. Forces, ismun. Remember this word? Ismun. And ismun relates to nouns. Uh, that's how it translates, sorry. Translated it as nouns. But it includes nouns, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs of place and time, etc. Fa'alun. We have fa'alun. Verb, past, present, and command. Command is the, is the imperative, which is to occur in the future. When you give a command to somebody, it is something futuristic. They have to do it either tomorrow or the following day or in a few moments, whatever, right? Then we have harfun. Ismun fi'alun harfun. Ismun fi'alun harfun. Remember those words, inshallah? Harf means particle. And it includes all prepositions, conjunctions, conditional particles, and some interrogative particles, right? So these are the three, aqsamul kalam, 
The axonal glands are how much? Three. Okay. Information relating to listen will asma. So this is the first one we are going to be doing. Uh, we're going to give some additional information about now. What is al ismu? So we want to know what exactly is ism. Right? These are the words. These are what makes up the words in Arabic language. These are the three categories of words in Arabic language. So what is al ism? It is a word that only gives a meaning. The meaning can be something physical. If it is alive or not, or something mental, something physical, something that is alive or not alive, right? For example, as we're going to give the example now, or something mental. Some examples are, or an example of each is shams. Shamsun, which means a sun, is one example. It's something that is not alive in the sense of having life like human beings have, right? Shamsun. So it is not a lie. Khalidun, Khalidun is a person's name. A person's name. Right? That person is alive. Right? Or we can say that man. Man. Girl. Boy. Dog. All of those are ism. Right? And ilmun. Ilmun is knowledge. It's not something that is physical or alive. You have knowledge. It is within you. It's not something that can be seen. Right? You understand this? We understand this? Inshallah. It does not have a tense. It does not have a tense. So it's not past tense, present tense. If you take any one of these words, shams, there's no tense to it. There's no past time, present time, nothing about time to it. Khalidun, nothing about time. Ilmun, right? And just like that, it is the same thing with any other is with any other um, <coughs> any other ism. So what we did yesterday is going to be repeated in this class. Throughout, inshallah, you're going to see. So there would not be a lot of new words to, to memorize. And then because we're going to be using it constantly, inshallah, these words would become like, uh, would become ingrained in you. The new words are like the words that we just learned. Shamsun, Ilmun, Knowledge, Bintun, Farasun. So you can now put aside these words and start learning them. Three types of ism, right? The first category is called Jamid. It's the primary noun. And it refers to those nouns that are not derived from another word. Remember we said Arabic is a language that the majority of words are derived from other words. Now there are some words that are Jamid. Jamid means something that is doesn't change. Right? It's Jamid. It refers to those nouns that are not derived from another, wo another word. Nor are other words derived from it. That is, they cannot be changed or be put into different forms, such as bintun, girl, right? Farasun, horse, bintun, farasun. These words are jamit. They don't. Um, they are not going to. They are not going to change. Masdar. Masdar is the root noun, and it is the name of the act done. Like for example. We just did. So many times we said hamd. Alhamdu. Alhamdu is the masdar. It is the root noun from which all the words like hamida, which is the verb, is derived from. Is derived from. Mahmud, Hamid, Muhammad. All of those words are derived from that root. Hamida. Okay? So it's the name of the act done. Okay, I'm going to explain that. In English, it is called the verbal noun. It is the noun from which many words are derived. The masdar does not have a tense also. Tense is specific for verbs. So that's why we are mentioning it so that you know that this is something that is, that is important to pay attention to. The masdar does not have tense. So if a word has tense, it cannot be the masdar. It cannot be an ism. Right? For example, aklun. Akala means to eat. Aklun is the act of eating, is the act of eating. Shorbun, the act of drinking. Okay, so you can now just put these words down, write them down, inshallah, and put the add them to your vocabulary list, inshallah, because inshallah, as we go along and we get into the verbs, we are going to use shariba ya shrabu, akala ya kulu. We're going to, so if you can start getting familiar with them in the meantime, inshallah, then that would be good. 
Mushtaqun, the derived noun. Derived noun refers to the noun that is derived from a masdar. The masdar is the source word. Masdar is the source word or the root noun. Okay? So these, the mushtaq, the word that is mushtaq, is derived from a masdar or the source word, such as darib. The original word is darabba, right? Or darbun is the masdar. Darbun is the masdar. Okay? Darib has an extra alif here. Daribun. It means the one who hits. The one who is doing the hitting. So you can see Daraba is present. That is the root of the word. These two nouns are derived from the root noun Darbun, the Masdar. The root noun or the Masdar, right? The source word, the root noun is Darbun for this word. Darbun. Darib is one of the words that is uh, derived from it is mushtaq. Darib mushtaq min darb. Madrub mushtaq min darb. Right? So madrub, if you look madrub, if you look carefully, you would see any word that has more than four letters or four letters, more than uh, three letters, that has a meme in front of it, the meme is an additional letter. Same thing with the wow. If there's an if there are three, if there are four letters and there's a wow in it, generally it is an addition. In this particular case, so we have two addition, two additional letters in the um, in this word, meme and wow. It is madrubun, madrubun, daribun, madrubun, mushtaqani, min darbun. They are both derived from the root word, the master, masdaruhu, masdaruhuma, darbun. They are both derived from their master. Masdaruhuma, huma means the two of them, right? Daribun, madrubun, darbun. Okay, these two nouns are derived from the root noun darb, which means hitting, the act of hitting. Like we have aklun, the act of eating, shurbun, the act of drinking. Recognizing is al ism. Recognizing the ism. How do you recognize the ism? The ism is recognized by jarrun, by jar. Tanween, the entrance of alif and lam and the particles of jar. Remember we did jar yesterday? Right? So the ism is recognized by jar. What does that mean? We will discuss that. It's recognized by tanween. The entrance of alif and lam and the particles of jar. Four things, right? Let us go. Generally, the ism, al ism, the ism, al ismu, if it was just ism, I would say ismun, generally ismun, but the ism, I said al ism, Right, has at least three letters as we discussed before, like Hamdun. Okay, the four signs by which they are recognized are so we are going to use the same Hamd as our example. Right, Hamdun, we know it's an ism because it has first thing that we know about it, it has at least three letters. Alhamdulillah, that's the first thing. Jar, this refers to the Kasra that is caused by a grammatical influence on the last letter of the noun. This refers to the kasra. See this kasra here? That is caused by a grammatical influence on the last letter of the noun. The influence here is the min. When min comes in front of any word, it is harmful jar. Any harmful jar. Any harmful jar. We're going to discuss them, inshallah. But min, let us take min now. Min is harmful jar. See this? It is jar. This is recognized by jar. The jar, this is jar. It comes in front, the harful jar comes in front of, of the, the noun. It makes it kasra. This is majrur. Majrur. Fi halat jar. It is majrur. Min al bayti. So because min comes before al bayt, the last letter takes kasra. Because min comes before it, right? Go into the Quran, every time you see min, right? Min sharri ma khalaq, min shururi anfusina, wa min sayyati, right? You understand? We understand that? Harf means it's a particle. So we understand that first one. The second one is only is only al ism. Remember, I don't put, I didn't write it in English now. Only al ismu takes tanween. Either with Dhamma, Hamdun. Notice, 
or fatha hamdan or kasra hamdin on the final letter of the word only al ism takes tanmeen either with dhamma hamdun fatha hamdan or kasra hamdin on the final letter of the word verbs and harf never never verbs and harf the fa'al and the harf never takes the mean never takes the mean right i think that's easy only al ism takes al alif and lam in front of it for example we have alhamdu right notice also one of the thing notice all the time it has hamdun hamdan hamdin <coughs> when al comes in front of it the tanmeen drops it becomes alhamdu or alhamdi like in alhamda lillahi verbs and harf never verbs and harf never takes al they never take tanmeen okay get it particles of jar that is preposition prepositions like these are all prepositions here li ki bi fi ala an ila min you can start learning them if you want right min ila an ala fi bi ki li we're going to learn them soon inshallah when these precede the noun they come before the noun like min al bayti it means that that's an ism because the particles of jar none of these none of these can enter upon can enter upon a verb or a particle okay they don't enter so a particle an can enter upon ala we can say an ala okay it doesn't work or min ila or fi bi it doesn't work okay it doesn't the, the, the particle doesn't enter upon the particle so if you see any of these particles in front of any word it means that that word is an ism okay so that is for the four signs there's another there's something else that i want to add additionally every word that has al ta al marabuta this ta here you see this you notice it you have a notice in the quran it is an ism verbs fi'l and harf are not they cannot take ta al marab ta al marabuta right like muslimatun mu'minatun you see it? see there mu'minatun muslimatun mudarrisatun tabibatun that i think is very easy but you have to still go over it and you have to still learn it so that inshallah uh, it would be easy for you okay four qualities of al ism al asma four qualities there are four qualities to it. the first thing the first quality of an ism is that it, it has number added added is number and this is a this is a grammatical number this is not like 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is different this is a grammatical number and we did this word yesterday mufradun right so we have singular musanna dual and jama plural these are the three words we did these words yesterday so you are learning back the same words the words are repeated mufradun musanna jam'un read it with me mufradun musanna jam'a mufradun musanna jam'a we did nakira yesterday tankir nakira it is indefinite and the indefinite word normally takes a tanmi tankir nakira indefinite right so the opposite of indefinite is ma'rifa nakiratun ma'rifatun definite and this takes an al alif and lam this is one of the signs of it being ma'rifa it takes an alif and lam nakiratun ma'rifatun the gender everything in arabic has gender it's either one of the two it's either masculine muzakkar which we did al muzakkar or al muannas we did this yesterday and then we did the final thing the case the words have a case it's either rafu'un or marfu'un the nas nasbun or mansubun accusative right the accusative case and jarrun or majrun we just discussed jar the word that is jar the the harf of jar the harf of jar that causes uh the word to become majrur right it can only enter upon an ism that's what we discussed so you would see the word taking a kasra at the end now so we have just quickly we have four categories here for the qualities of ism mufradun a uh, number definiteness gender case number definiteness gender and case right under the number category mufradun singular musanna dual jam'a plural read with me 
every time I'm reading Arabic, read with me, please. Nakiratun, indefinite. Ma'rifatun, definite. Muzakkarun, for the gender, masculine. Muannasun, everything is either muzakkar or muannas. Then we have the case, raf'un or marfu'un. And marfu means that the dhamma is on the letter, that's all. Mansub means a fatah is on the letter. Maju means a kashra in the letter. Now, so we finish with ism, information relating to al-fi'alu. What is al-fi'alu? Fi'al is verb, right? Fi'al in English means verb. It is a word that gives a meaning, so the word has a meaning in it, and it has a specific or particular time when that meaning took place. The word fi'al, the verb, it has, it gives a meaning. So if I say walk, walk is a fi'al, or he walks, it's an action. He runs, he drives, he eats, he sleeps, he sits, he cries. All of these are actions. They are action words, a doing word. And it has, it has, fa'ala means to do. Right? So it's a word that shows action. And it has a specific or particular time when that meaning took place, that, that particular action took place. So an example of this is daraba. Daraba means he hit. It has two indications. The first indication is the meaning of hitting. The meaning of hitting. So we know that someone is being hit. The meaning of hitting it has two indications. The meaning of hitting, the particular time when the hitting took place. Here it is in the past. He hit. Verbs are generally of three types. Past tense, al-madi. Madi means past. It's mada. It already went. Describe an act that occurred in the past, al-madi, such as daraba, which means he hit. The present tense, al-mudari'u, describes an act that is occurring in the present time. Al-hal, al-hal is, is now, now, right? Hal means condition, in the present condition, in the present state, okay? So al-mudari describes an act that is occurring in the present, such as yadribu, he is hitting. Yadribu means he is hitting. And then we have the imperative or the command form, al-amru, the imperative form or the command form. It describes an act that is meant to occur in the future, al-mustaqbal, such as, mustaqbal means future, right? The mustaqbal in the future. As, hit, idrib, doraba yadribu idrib, and this is how you memorize the verbs, inshallah, and when we go to study the verbs, this is what you will do. So there's three tenses in the, for the verbs, madi, mudari, and amr. Madi, mudari, amru. Madi, mudari, amru. Madi, mudari, amru. Past tense, madi. Present tense, al mudari. Imperative or command form, al amru. Toraba is past. Yadribu is, is present. Idrib is the command form. Recognizing the fail. The fail is recognized by it being preceded by qad. Example, the word qad. You know, Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ التَّقْوِيمِ Right? لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا is a verb. خَلَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ التَّقْوِيمِ Every day, the Mu'adhin says, قَدْ قَامَتِ الصَّلَاةُ قَدْ قَامَتِ الصَّلَاةُ قَامَ is a verb. قَامَتِ الصَّلَاةُ The salat is, is going to be established. قَدْ comes in front of it. So any word you see cut comes in front of, it's generally a fi'al, inshallah. Or the letter seen. The seen comes before the verb, the present tense, right? Yaqulu is the present tense. Qala yaqulu. Sayaqulu sufaha'u minan nas. Ma wallahum an kiblatihim. That's the ayah in surah and the first ayah in the second juice. Sayaqulu. Sayaqulu. Right? Seen is added. Or sawfa. Seen or sofa is added to the verb. So the, the present tense verb, so it makes it futuristic, right? So sayakulu. Allah says sayakulu sufaha. Sufaha means foolish, right? So Allah says sayakulu sufaha u minan nas. Minan nas means from mankind. Sayakulu sufaha u. The sufaha, the foolish people from among mankind will say. Okay? Then there is sofa. Sofa. Okay, sofa wala sofa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda. Kalla sofa ta'alamun. Thumma kalla sofa ta'alamun. Kalla law ta'alamun ilma al-yaqeen. Latarawunna al-jaheen. 
sofa. Kalla sofa ta'alamun. Ta'alamun is verb. Thumma kalla sofa ta'alamun. Right? Wa sofa yu'atika rabbuka. Sofa yu'atika. Allah says this in Surah Abduha. Wa la sofa yu'atika. Allah will give you in the future. So, rabbuka fatharda. So, you're going to become pleased. Right? But the word here, sofa, enters upon a verb. And also the silent ta that comes at the end of the past tense, third person, feminine, singular verb. Now, we didn't do any of this, inshallah. So, I mean, you're not, you're not expected to really, all you do is just keep the notes for these things because we're going to mention them back again as we go along, inshallah. Fa'ala is a verb. When this ta is added, fa'ala means he did. Fa'alat means she did, past tense, right? So it ended on the the, the past tense, third person, feminine, singular verb. It is feminine, fa'alat, she did. It is singular, it is feminine, and it is third person, right? She is third person. Okay, so we have the fellas recognized by Qad, Qad Qamdus Alat, Sofa, Seem, the Ta. For our purpose, al fi'lu that is past tense, has three letters and is third person masculine singular okay and it will be generally recognized because it takes a pattern on the last letter and all the other letters are mutaharrik has vowel signs mutaharrik we did mutaharrik it has vowel signs example the verb fa'ala has a last letter it has a pattern on the last letter and all the other two letters the other two letters have Vowel signs on them also, inshallah. The three letter verbs have six different scales, which we'll discuss, inshallah, very shortly. Don't worry about that right now. The past tense verbs can also have one extra letter added, like we did last time. Af'ala. Fa'ala. Notice, because of the shadda, shadda means two letters, right? And fa'ala. So it has one letter added. It can also have two letters, like if ta'ala, looking. Fa'ala is still there, right? Alif and ta are added. In fa'ala, alif and nun are added. Fa'ala remains. The root of the word, right? Tafa'ala, or three extra letters, is tafa'ala. Okay? We did this yesterday again, so this is quick revision. There are four letters that are added at the beginning of the past tense to change it to the present tense. Now we did fa'ala, fa'ala is the past tense, right? We want to change it to present tense. There are four letters that indicate this. We did already. Ashhadu Alif. Right? It means the first person. A'udhu billahi. I seek Allah's protection. Asta'inu. Asta'inu ka ya Allah. A'buduka. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. I worship you. Right? Noon. Na'buduka. Nasta'inuka. Na'udhu billahi. Right? That is we. That is the plural. First person. Then ta is generally used for second person. Taf'al. Anta taf'al. And the tadhab, you go, you do, right? Huwa yaf'al, hum yaf'alu, yeah. This alif and nun are for the first person. Alif is for the singular, and nun is for the plural. Adhab, nadhab. A'bud, na'bud. Ahmad, nahmad. Astaghfir, nastaghfir, right? Ta, ta'bud. Tadhab, tadhabuna, tadhabina. All of these are you did this, and you plural did this, and things like that. Ya, yadhabu, yadhabuna, yadhabna, right? The ya. So these four letters are added to the verb, like for example, yaf'alu, taf'alu, naf'alu, af'alu. Four qualities of the verb. Again, we have number, right? Number is the same thing, mufrad, musanna, and jama. There are no more numbers, just those two numbers, right? The tense and the time is madi. We did madi already. Mudari and al-amr, the imperative. Gender is muzakkar and mu'annath. Muzakkar and mu'annath. And then the case. It is raf'un or marfu'un, nasbun or mansubun, jazmun or madzum. Jazmun means it takes a sukun. It doesn't take fatha or qasra or dhamma. Here is where the jazm comes. So if you see a jazm on a word, it is a verb generally, right? Generally, it's a, it's a verb. Sometimes there are exceptions, inshallah, and you will come, we'll discuss that. But when a word is jazm, it has jazm, it has, it is not zoom, then it is a verb, inshallah. So, 
The same thing for numbers, we have numbers, right? Mufrad Musanna Jama. The same thing for gender, Muzakkar and Muannas. The same thing for case, Marfu, Mansub, except for the final category, which is Madzum. Okay? So that is just one additional thing you have to learn. We already discussed Maldi, Mudari, Amr. And with the ism, the difference between the ism and the verb is that the ism has definite and indefinite. Nakiran, Arifa. This has Maadi, Mudari, and Amr. Inshallah. All right. So, Inshallah, we can move ahead because we did all of that already. Now we come to the haruf. What is al harfu? It is a word that the indication of verbs or nouns does not fit upon. You know those indications that we talk about? Like we cannot add qad to to fi, qad fi. We cannot add sofa or seen to fi, the harf al jar, right? The harf. The same thing, it does not take alif and lam at the beginning, nor does it take tanween at the end for the ism. All the signs that we discussed, the four signs for the ism and the four signs for uh, the fell, it does not take them. It does not show its meaning by itself, right? So we say min. Min, what does it mean? Min means from, but from where or from what or, you know, there must be something along with it. Its meaning is brought out by way of another word. For example, min, right, means from. The meaning is not clear by itself. But when the word bait, al bait, the house, is added, we have min al baiti from the house. And this brings out, this, this brings to light the meaning that min serves. Min serves that meaning, inshallah. And it brings to light that, inshallah. So, particles are of two types the causative particle, amil, it does the action. It is the particle that causes a rob. Grammatical change on the first letter, the, the final letter of the word that follows it. For example, Muhammadun fil masjidi. Muhammadun is in the masjid. Fil masjidi. Okay? Muhammadun fil masjidi. And there is a non causative particle. Right? Fi is a causative particle because it affects the word that follows it. So it's called amil. And then there's ghayru amil. It's a particle that does not cause a rab does not cause any grammatical change on the last letter of the, word, of, of, the, of, the, of the word, such as wow, which means and. When used in a phrase such as Muhammadun wa Hamidun, as you see Muhammadun, here Muhammadun fil masjidi. Here is Muhammadun wa Hamidun, there's no change. The same termin is used, right? Termin dhamma. It does not cause an era of change, a grammatical change on the word that follows it. So basically, I mean, all you need to do is go over it. And inshallah, we're going to explain this, as I said, right? It needs just you be patient with, with us. And inshallah, all of these things are going to be clearer and clearer as we go in. Two lessons cannot really bring home anything, inshallah, uh, in any kind of a way. So stick with us, inshallah. As I said, give us 10 weeks. And inshallah, I mean, you know, be with us for 10 weeks, three lessons a week, and just try to revise for every lesson, inshallah, and we'll work from there, inshallah. All right? Um, we will do this chart later, inshallah, because there's no time for it right now, inshallah. So we're going to close here. We're going to close up here. And remember, we are learning Arabic for Allah, brothers and sisters. We're going to close with, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadwan la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa tu May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and guide all of us and strengthen all of us to do what is right and keep away from what is wrong and bless us with good in this world and the hereafter and save us from hell. Forgive us and our parents, our children, and all those Muslims in wherever situation they are and whatever situation they are. The hardship, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the Muslims that are suffering in whatever part of the world they are suffering. And that's all of us to be good and keep good and try to do what is good and try to learn this deen and learn this language for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik shalom la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfirullah wa tuluhu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.